I've shared my distaste for Tryon as a company and as a publisher in the past on multiple occasions. I disliked how they relaunched Defiance 2050 with minimal changes and offered players founders packs for a rebranded game. I disliked how they attempted to farm money out of people by relaunching Rift with a subscription-based progression server that would be in a perpetual state of playing catch-up with the live servers. I disliked how much of a pay-to-win nightmare that Arcage became for players, but never did I expect that this would actually happen. It was revealed on October 22nd that the German games publisher Gamigo, the same people behind Area Games' merger back in 2016, would be purchasing Tryon Worlds along with all of the IPs under Tryon, including Arcage, Rift, Defiance 2050, Trove, and Atlas Reactor. The following day, Gamigo released a statement in their press release citing the strengthening of its position as a leading EU and American gaming company. Now let's take a quick moment here to go over exactly what they said. The Gamigo AG has acquired major assets from Tryon Worlds Inc., a leading US gaming company with offices in Redwood City, California and Austin, Texas, and has as publisher and developer of online and console MMO games well-known games such as Rift, Defiance, Trove, and Arcage in its portfolio. Tryon was acquired via an assignment for the benefit of the creditor's process in which the buyer only buys those assets with which he wishes to continue the business. In this process, Gamigo Group acquired the majority of the assets, including the platform, takes over employees to operate the business, and gets the full publishing rights of the games. The IPs of the Tryon Worlds games have been acquired by Gamigo's sister company, Padma Pani, and are made available for Gamigo Group worldwide and exclusive. The successful acquisition and subsequent integration of Tryon into our portfolio substantially strengthened Gamigo's position in the European and American gaming market. On the other hand, we're looking to unlock substantial synergies with the group's existing business to further benefit from the remarkable growth potential that the gaming market offers. As I'm sure most of you remember, and this probably still stings a little to think about, Telltale Games laid off the majority of its staff, leaving a mere 25 people employed while the company itself shut down, filing for bankruptcy. So take note here that Gamigo listed that they had acquired Tryon via an assignment for the benefit of the creditor's process, which indicates that Tryon was, in essence, insolvent. Now, this has not in any way been confirmed, but what I gather from this is that Gamigo's acquisition of Tryon was likely their last step to prevent bankruptcy, with the assignment for benefit of creditors being a liquidation alternative to bankruptcy for Tryon. This further explains why Gamasutra also went on to report that out of the upwards of 200 Tryon Worlds employees, only 25 of them would be allowed to remain employed at each studio, laying off over 150 people that worked for them. More than 150 people now out of the job because Tryon was so in debt that they could no longer dig their way out of the hole that they'd thrown themselves into. One other thing of note that other websites aren't actually bringing attention to is the fact that Gamigo stated specifically that they had acquired the major assets of Tryon World Inc., not that they had purchased Tryon Worlds Inc. This means that Gamigo actually has full control over what they want to buy, which begs the question, what aren't they going to buy? While Gamigo has yet to actually confirm exactly what they've purchased, this means every non-profitable game in Tryon's portfolio is set to potentially shut down any time during the acquisition. Many people already speculate that Atlas Reactor, Tryon's least populated game, likely won't make it. Neither will Defiance 2050, as both games' populations are so desolate, so void of players that they'll be lucky to get much more of a passing glance. Now the three games left, Rift, Arcage, and Trove are all being talked about because they're, and let's be honest here, the only games that people really cared about anyway. Rift is up in the air because it hasn't really been all that profitable for quite a few years. That is why Tryon attempted to milk the player base with promises of returning Rift to what made it great, its vanilla days. While some players returned, it looks as though it wasn't nearly as large of a success as they'd wanted it to be. Arcage is also a highly plausible target. Yes, whales populate that game like no other I can think of outside of, I guess, potentially Blade and Soul. However, with the state the game is in, and the downward spiral the population has been in ever since it launched, chances are, well, uh, possible, I guess, that it won't make it either. But that is what the private server alternative Arc Rage is for, a game that I can safely say I have been playing on and off for the last couple months and I have been thoroughly enjoying, but I'll talk about that more in a little bit. Finally, Trove is Tryon's most populated game, so there's no doubt in my mind that it's going to be picked up by Gamigo, so Trove players pretty much don't have anything to worry about. Now, and I say this regretfully, I have yet to find any private servers for Defiance, Atlas Reactor, or Rift worth playing, but Arc Rage is definitely worth it if you're on the lookout for a new home. 
They've been up for a long while, and other MMO tubers have even went as far as commenting on how much they enjoy that private server. In support of players seeking a new home, ArcRage is offering new and returning players alike a special game pack that will feature items to assist players with getting to endgame and participating in what they loved about the game. A few notes about GameAgo. Back in 2012, they were hacked, having more than 8 million email addresses and passwords leaked in what looked like the largest security breach of the entire year. The hackers gained the personal information of 2.4 million German accounts, 1.3 million French accounts, and over 3 million US accounts, prompting GameAgo to inform people of the importance of changing their passwords after the hack. This showed a severe lack of security on GameAgo's part. Then, during their acquisition, <clears throat> I mean merger with Area Games, they acquired each of Area's MMOs, Aura Kingdom, Echo of Soul, Phoenix, S4 League, Shia, and Twin Saga. However, after acquiring each of those titles, no progress had been made to combat the pay-to-win issues, the bugs, or population concerns that ran rampant across all of the titles listed. They continued to decline in population, they remained pay-to-win. This bodes ill for Rift. Arcage and Trove, as let's be honest here, GameGo seems to be more or less an MMO graveyard. A graveyard that GameGo can milk for every cent the games are worth until ultimately and assuredly shutting them down. So, this is definitely a sad day for the industry. Yes, I hate Tryon, I absolutely loathe them. They let pay to win destroy them and they did nothing to fix the concerns of the player base. Did over 150 people actively working in the company deserve to be axed? No, absolutely not. Tryon staff worked hard to keep their games alive and I legitimately feel for each and every one of them that were laid off. I'm sorry for everyone that is negatively affected by the closure of Tryon World, I really am. I truly hope that you find a home somewhere the company respects and appreciates your hard work more. Anyway guys, that is it for me. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you all next time. Peace! Thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, drop a like, leave a comment, consider subscribing to my channel over here, checking out another video, or following me on Twitter at ByteSticks to just chat or hang out.